Are you ready for the long haul? Because I binned again. I binned again and sorry, not sorry. Uh, so I have a lot of stuff. This is gonna be a longer video. Um, it's not even the end of the week. I might end up with more stuff at yard sales if I get lucky. Um, but this is just what I got on this bins trip. I'm not sure exactly how many pounds I have. I would say about 51, 52 pounds. All right, so I've got four Ikea bags on the floor right next to me there. I'm gonna start with bag number one, which is the non-clothing items. Uh, this first item is a frivolous purchase, um, impulse purchase, and I'm gonna keep it. It is a non-stick bathtub mat shaped like a fish. Could you resist that? I have a guest bathroom with a bathtub in it, but I don't ever have guests or let people in my house, but I have a fish. Okay. Um, when I'm standing at a shoe bin and my bins buddy is at the other end of the shoe bin and there's someone standing in between us and I'm like, hey, what are those purple sneakers over there? Because um, I couldn't rush over to them because there was someone in the way. Um, and they were, she pulled them out for me and they were these hokas. This is the only, the second time I've found Hoka's. The other pair I found was at a thrift store in um, Palm Springs. <clears throat> and he did well with them. These, I, these are beat up. Um, I would not have purchased another pair of sneakers in this condition. Um, but I've heard Hoka's can do okay, even, even in bad condition. So they're actually, like, if you look at this part, that's in pretty good condition. The soles are in good condition. Look, there's no heel drag. Um, this one's in amazing condition. This one has slight, like, degradation of the, of the rubber right there, just slightly shredded. Like, really, everything on this section is okay, but apparently the wearer must have had narrow heels, um, so when they would run or walk, their heels would move up and down, and so that's, that's where the problem is. But, I mean, you wear these with socks, you won't be able to feel it. I... I think I am listing them at like 30. What do you think? I wanted to I wanted to see what the fuss was all about and I managed to jam my foot into it, but it, they were size seven and a half, so they were so tight I couldn't really tell like to say whether, oh, these are comfortable or not. Um, but still, that was a good find. Um, <clears throat> this is, I feel like these are retro. Tell me if they are one of the one of the um, vintage thing areas that I what is on me uh, that I I am I don't know is Y two K. I feel like these are Y two K, but I'm not sure why. Why two K? These are Skechers. They have a little zip up here, which I mean I guess it's like a little <clears throat> pocket. No gold bullion in there. Bullion? Gold coin or anything in there. Anyway, what do you think? Is that Y2K? I think they're really cute. Another one I jammed my foot in to see how cute they were. Uh, but they're a size, these are a seven and a half. And, oh, I think those hookah, hookahs might, might be seven. No, I think they're seven and a half. Uh, whatever. If you're interested in them, you can ask me later. Look at the great condition. Um, I'm a nine in Skechers. Skechers went a little small for me. Um, I don't know this brand. It is H by Hudson. Um, I did, oh, you can't see. You know, I normally do this in daylight and I am, I am using the light of the ring. So I hope it's not bad. I, I don't usually do that, but it's just too light to, to go by natural light. Anyway, I looked up H by, Hud H by Hudson comps were like some were kind of lowish some were kind of a, they were mostly okay-ish but i i just thought this was a neat boot this is a man's boot leather got a slouchy like quality to it it won't straighten out and it is a size 10. perforated little holes got a lot of shoes um, this is a pair I probably, I picked these up early on and had I done a final run through, um, cause I kind of stop in between, you know, times while I'm waiting for the new bins to come out and I review, um, and I reviewed these early when I didn't realize I was going to find so much stuff. They are born and they're in decent condition. 
and you can tell they're worn and bored. I think bored is a good shoe, but doesn't always do that great. Um, so I probably would have put these back, but let me tell you this. First of all, the size is a little confusing because it says, it says nine slash 40.5, which just seems like it's, you know, a US EU, but then it says M slash W, which, may, which makes me wonder if the, the nine goes with, the, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to list them as a women's nine because I'm an eight and a half or nine, and based on how they fit me, they're a nine. And if they don't sell and I have to keep them, these are the most comfortable sandals I've ever put on. They're so much more comfortable than any flip-flop or sandal that I currently own or have ever owned as far as I know. So I'm okay with it. They have this nice buckle. I think I'll do okay with it. I probably shouldn't pick these up. I think this is like, I've been picking up Bionic sandals and I, I have sold some, but I still have some that are sitting. And these are these, uh, they're the like cork look. And I know I have at least one pair of these, if not two. Velcro and Velcro, and they are a size nine. I think they're, hang on. Okay, I don't know. They are very large on me, but I'm not sure they're large enough to be considered a men's large. There are the um, Kyla, which doesn't seem like and they're in EU41. They are really big, though. Ah, shoot. I don't know. I'll have to figure this out. Oh, sometimes sizing. Ah! Um, okay, these are... Ooh, come on. Tevas. Just, you know, just Tevas. But nice Tevas. Um, a little more feminine maybe than than the standard ones with uh velcro here velcro there velcro everywhere and these are a size i think these are my size too these are a us nine so nice i pick up tevas if they're cheap these shoes are gorgeous gorgeous tell me no let's do these first and then we'll get into the three best pair uh, they're just a pair of, I guess they're like house slippers, and they, they are velvet on the inside. They're Victoria's Secret, and I don't think they've ever been worn, and they're blingy. I mean, I don't expect to get more than, I don't know, like 15 if I'm lucky, but I wanted to pick them up. They are missing like one crystal there, and then there's like a discolored crystal. Maybe I should wear them. They feel a little, they're too, they're, I think they're a medium, but they seem too big on me, but I, I think maybe they're just too wide on me is the, is the problem. Um, okay, now we're getting into the, I think it's the last three pair of footwear, and they're the best of the bunch. These are gorgeous. These are Vionic. They're like a, like a booty. I don't know, is there a, is there a word for this sort of style? Or it looks sort of like a booty there, but then it's like that. And then it has this gorgeous tortoiseshell heel. And look at the condition. Look at this. Ah, oh, just gorgeous. And they're a women's size 11. I've been finding a lot of women's size 11. I don't know what's up with that. Look at the condition of the, these. These are gorgeous. I hope these get good money. These should get good money because these are, these are gorgeous. Um, and this one is my one... Uh, coin toss of the day boots I didn't even know when I picked up my one boot what kind they were um, they have a zipper here but they're Uggs um, it's hard to see because the reflection there we go Uggs and one of them does have the holograph but here's the fatal mistake I tried them on I'm not selling them. I'm keeping these. I'm keeping them at least for a while. Sometimes I keep things and then ultimately decide that I don't love them as much, but I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine that I, I would at any point not love these. And I don't keep much of things that I think that can really make me good money, but I have to keep those. I have to. 
Um, and then these, oh, I got excited. I found these early on because this is supposedly a Bolo brand. Um, then when I looked at the comps, I wasn't as impressed as I, as I thought I, I thought they would be. But still, when I find a brand that other resellers talk about and I've never even seen, you know, and I find them at our little bins, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, they are men's boots and they are bed stew. And they're really, really nice boots. And they're, there's one issue with them, which does not affect them structurally. They're, they're not worn down. The bottoms are in excellent shape. Um, they just have this one, like, cut there. It, it goes through just the, the first, very first layer of, of it. So, like, you can feel it. Um, and it is actually, like, split. So it's not just, it's not just a mark. Um, and at first I thought, how does somebody do that? And then I remembered the time I dropped a box cutter and it went like point down right into my toe nail, you know, and it, it took a year for that to, more than a year for that to completely grow out. So I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Anyway, so I thought these are really cool. I think I'm listing them at 70 and would be, you know, comfortable uh, taking 50 uh, with no shipping discount that I'm covering. And then I have two handbags, which is amazing because I don't think I've ever picked one a handbag up at the bins. Um, and this is the Beverly, Beverly, yeah, Betsy. I was going to say Beverly Johnson, like the Beverly Johnson, um, uh, what was it? What was it? Howard Johnson <laughs> in the San Fernando Valley. Um, anyway, uh, I have sold a Betsy Johnson bow bag before, but that was a solid black one. This is so, so cute really clean inside, and I'm a sucker for all things Betsy. Not for me personally. Um, a little floppy here, but I, I'm assuming that's the way it's supposed to be. It's kind of mini Mousy, isn't it? Uh, and then this bag is a project bag. I have a couple of project things in this haul. And what I mean is a, a, most resellers would not pick this up because the work involved for what possible money I might make isn't worth it. But I am a recovering crafter, and so occasionally I am lured by the actual project. Like, I bought this because I wanted to try this project. So the brand is The Sack, and I know The Sack is decent, but this leather feels super high quality. Really. Like, I would guess it was like lamb leather or something. It's gorgeous. And it is amazingly clean inside, but somebody put her in a puddle or something. See that? Um, so my first thought was to buy some leather dye and maybe do the whole thing black and then leave this and this and maybe even this, the peach color. Um, but then I'm wondering if there's something that's more like a glaze or a wash that would darken the whole thing. Um, and so, I don't know. If you have any ideas of something that I can do, not, you know, bring it to a shoe place and have them dye it, no. So if you have any ideas, leave it in the comment section, please. Okay, next. for next year, I guess, this is Outdoor Gear, which is not a brand I know, but I looked it up and, um, their ski stuff does okay. So it's just a pair of like ski pants or snowboard pants in plain black in size large. There were a couple of other pants like this. One of them, you know, I looked up the comps and they weren't as good as this one was. Um, and I think ski stuff can do really well. So I decided to just pick it up. Uh, this is another maybe project piece. Honestly, I had no idea what I was going to do with it when I picked it up. I just threw it in. I was like, I don't know. We'll see. It's a Vince, but it's a size large, and it's clearly been shrunk. So it's, but it's shrunk to my size. So I might actually keep this. I mean, at one point, I brought it home, and I stuck it on the side for me. But now I'm just not sure. Um, I could wet it and then block it on a towel to try and get it closer to its regular size. But I don't know what it's supposed to look like. I don't know if this like crinkling, you know, came from the fact that somebody washed it. It is dry clean only, but obviously it wasn't, which is fine because I wouldn't have taken it if I had to actually dry clean it. Um, not for myself. 
so I don't know if that's because it was washed. Um, and then the inside is like a t-shirt cotton. So I love that because you're wearing wool, but you don't actually have to have wool on your skin. And again, this is crinkly, but I don't know if it's crinkly from what was done to it or if it was always crinkly, but it's so evenly crinkly. Um, I don't know. I have a feeling that I'm not going to want to deal with the 68% cotton, 32% wool, which means the inside is all cotton and then the outside is probably still a cotton blend, but there's no... There's a style number. If, if I can, I don't have luck with those style numbers though, but if I can find something out about this, that may help me decide what I should do with it. Check piece. So I have done some bleach tie dye and I really like doing it, um, but I don't have any projects right now. So, you know, um, and I've actually sold a few things that I've bleach dyed and one of them was a North Face hoodie. So it's a North Face hoodie. It's a beautiful color, it's like an emerald green jewel tone has this nice design hood even has the drawstrings but it has a stain and this does not look like a stain you can get out i mean i guess i could try to get it out but it doesn't look like a stain that's going to come out and i don't know that i even want to to try because i want to bleach dye this so yep that was the plan when i purchased this i think that's it on project pieces Okay, this is new at Tag. Um, it is Banana Republic. It's the banana, the banana. It was from TJ Maxx, and I'm going to take that tag off because it was $19.99. And even compare at was only $32, which isn't, you know, which makes this not like this amazing buy. But it is new at Tag, and it's a pretty black dress. Um, so it's just like a plain black dress in the front, and then it's. I'm gonna actually put up a picture because it's hard to show, but it's a crisp cross thing going on in the back. And I liked that aspect of it. Um, and it is size, I don't remember what size, oh, it's a 10 petite. I knew it wasn't my size. All right, I'm gonna leave this bag here to put things in. All right, I will post a picture of this because I'm not taking it out of the bag. Why? Because it has been lint rolled and lint rolled and I'm not exposing it to air. It's a Dennis by Dennis Basso. Um, it's a coat. I found two, other, two listings of this coat. One of them called it a raincoat and one of them didn't. And it does have that rain coat trench feeling. Even after it's been lint rolled, there's some stuff there. But anyway, it's got that that um, trench coat fabric. So I did mention that it had sort of a raincoat, you know, but maybe it's more of a rain um, uh, resistant, water resistant type coat. And speaking of trench coats, this is, the brand is Bradley Johns for Gruner and Company. And I did find plenty of that brand and, and it sold okay. Um, and this is a nice, really nice, oh, heavy, um, men's size 44 regular trench coat. You know, the <clears throat> typical trench coat. It's got epaulets, it's got that flap in the back. It's got a nice, I think like wool lining. There is one tiny hole, which I'm debating fixing um, not so much so I don't have to mention it, but I don't know where it is now. Um, but the only thing is, is I don't think I have, I have like three big bags of thread and I don't have anything in khaki because I have a khaki jacket of my own that needs a little mending and I don't have the thread for it. Um, oh, there it is. Teeny tiny. But I just wouldn't want it to get worse. Like I'd rather fix it so whoever wears it doesn't have to worry about something happening to it. Um, so I might still be able to do it with just like some, I don't know, black thread, or maybe I'll go, I don't know. I don't know, Never mind. Do you, re do you really care that much about that? I might be going on a little too much about a tiny hole and how to mend it. But maybe I'll just go to the store eventually and pick up some khaki thread because clearly it's something that's 
important and missing from my collection. I mean, if I have two things that need to be fixed, how many things in the future will come into my home and I won't have the thread for it? All right, you convinced me. All right, this is Jessica Howard Woman, which I did not look up. It was just so pretty. It's a size 14 and it's pink and green and it's kind of a textured cotton and it's got this super sweet tie. This is ribbon material and see how it like weaves its way through the dress. It's definitely like a similar aesthetic, like the same woman that would wear Lily Pulitzer would wear this. And they say, yeah, size 14, fully lined. Style based pickup is not unusual for me. If you haven't seen my videos, um, well, welcome. And I buy things that are sometimes not things other resellers would buy. You know, I'm not all about brand. I've got brand, I've got style. I like things that are quirky. This is, I was on the fence. I put this in my cart, I took it out, I put it back, um, and ended up keeping it. It's Studio by Torrid. I've never heard of Studio by Torrid. This is a new label. Um, the reason why I was hesitant is because it's zero, and I usually don't buy a zero in Torrid, um, but that's still a size 12, and it's a nice career office piece. Uh, black blazer, and like the pockets are still sewn shut. I believe they're real pockets. Um, and then it has this ruching on the sleeve. I think I have a jacket like this. I don't know if it's a Torrid. And I don't even know if I still have it or if it's sold. Oh, well, whatever. Um, okay, this brand, Pure Navy. I never heard of it. Um, but I bought it because of the style, and this is 100% linen. And I was wondering if it was some sort of offshoot of Old Navy, uh, but I looked up the RN number and it's actually, Pure Navy is a Saxon company. So that's that's actually good news. I will squeeze that into the description. Uh, it's a dress, but I am going to suggest that it's, you know, could also be worn in a more like tunic-like fashion and for a, a real, you know, good lag and look thing. I don't know if you can see, it's got these like big patch pockets. Um, it is a size extra large. It's going to have to be steamed. Maybe even I'll have to take an iron to it. I don't know. My big steamer takes distilled water and can't find distilled water. Um, I might just put regular water in it. Sometimes I just use my little steamer, which I kind of prefer. I think next time I want a mid-size steamer. Uh, this is a brand I'm not familiar with, King Size, and it is King Sized. It's size 5X. Um, I did find this brand on Poshmark. Uh, not amazing comps or anything, uh, but I didn't find any piece as interesting as this. It's a nice, like, kind of, it's got... Waffle fabric inside and the, the sweatshirt fabric is, is heavy duty. So it makes it like a real cozy pullover, like a uh, quarter zip. And of course the camo fabric just makes it irresistible. All right. Uh, give me one second. Don't leave me. Um, hit the bell. Okay, these are Torrid Active, and they're also size zero. Hmm. Um, but I just kind of like these. They're leggings, and they have this neat stuff going on here. And they're full length, and I, no, uh, actually, they're not full length, but they're not Capri. I'm not, I know better than to buy, well, especially the Capri that, like, isn't fitted. I know, because I have a pair of those, like, in Lululemon that I can't even get a like on. Um, so, anyway. I'm not sure I put a lot of thought into those. All right, short season is coming upon us. So, I picked up these shorts. Shorts, it says. 515 Levi's, size 18. 
Um, and these are not short shorts. And this is, I'm not sure, this is attached at this seam and this seam. Not all, not all the way. And I am absolutely, actually not sure if that is, I think that's the way they came from the factory, but maybe it's possible somebody did that. I don't think so. Anyway, never make a lot of money on my shorts, but they're a good thing to have. There's another pair of denim shorts, also larger size. These are a 16. The brand is, I've never bought this brand before, seven. Is it seven, seven or just seven? I don't know. I bought them because they're nice shorts. These also, um, are they? No, these are just rolled up. Oh yeah, I'll probably press these. And they're, you know, nicely distressed and they've got nice pockets and contrast stitching. So I get, I'll be getting all my shorts listed soon. I thought these were Quacker Factory. They're Briggs, New York. They are vintage, size 18. And these are Capri, which I stay away from normally. But look, it's got these, like, sunflowers all over them. I love sunflowers. That's my favorite flower. Uh, my favorite smelling flower is a lilac. Um, but my favorite flower is a sunflower. <clears throat> Wide leg, <clears throat> lightweight denim, fake pockets in the back. I mentioned the size, yeah, size 18. I think I've already got these listed as, as a matter of fact. Well, yeah, I have it listed in Shop Thrilling anyway. Maybe in the drafts of the rest. Okay, I bought this because, first of all, the label made me laugh. Um, and there was actually another jacket that had the same label, um, but it was just sort of a blazer. So it wasn't as interesting, but the, the, you know, the tag. So it's custom made, Mr. Use Shop. Okay, but the funny part is, in front of Osan Air Base, like not an address or anything, it's just in front of the Air Base. I thought that was so funny. Um, and it's a hunting vest. I know this because I, I assume that's for bullets. Um, and then it's got this padding here for like the rifle so that, you know, when it kicks back, it doesn't hurt. Um, I don't understand what's going on here though. It goes all the way through. Um, if you unsnap this, there's a zipper. So you can... Open that part up. But, and then like, it's not a pocket. What is this? Any, any gun or people that kill watching this? Well, if you have any idea, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna just, you know, show it and let the buyer figure it out. Uh, <clears throat> we're getting along pretty quickly. These are, the brand is Klim, and they're motorcycle pants. I feel like these could be a good thing. I remember that I did do a quick look up um, and so obviously it was good enough for me to purchase, but I can't remember if it was really good or what. Um, but they're really nice. You know, it's a mix of, this is like the heavy duty and there's padding there and, and there's some mesh. So I, I have a hunch that these will do okay. And sometimes a hunch is all I need. All right, move this bag back. <laughs> and let's get to the last, uh-oh. Pausing. All right, these I put in my cart and forgot to review them, but in retrospect, I am not unhappy that I got them. They are vintage ski pants. There's no brand on them, uh, but they are made in Italy and they are the stirrup kind. So like after these came like ones that had like a boot cut, but there'd still be a stirrup underneath the, that part as a separate piece. Um, so I am just based on my experience and I have some experience. I used to ski a lot and uh, my dad actually sold ski wear in, uh, in Montreal. Um, I'm going to say these are late sixties, maybe very, very early 70, but I'm going more like sixties. So they're in pretty good condition. 
I won't say that they're perfect because they're not. They have a little bit of fuzziness, but I haven't found any um, holes and thank goodness it's not worn in the inside thighs, which apparently is a big problem for many people because I keep accidentally buying pants that are thin there. So I'm being more careful. This has a flaw that I discovered afterwards, but I would have bought it anyway, I think, because it's so cool. The brand is Talk of the Walk, I think, Atlantic City. That's loose, I knew that, but that's easy enough to tack down. There's no um, fabric label or anything, but this is suede. It's a black suede jacket with all this like art to wear stuff in a silky fabric. I'd say it's a little heavier duty than silk. Um, so I, it's a really interesting piece, obviously vintage. Um, so the issue with this is, let's see if I can find it without it taking too long. Oh yeah, the seam is open. So it's not a hole and Suede is a little harder to, to sew because it's hard to get the needle through, um, but I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. It won't be perfect, so I will probably take a photo of that area and say that this part's been mended. I, I don't always say I mended it. I just say, you know, appears to have been mended sometimes. And, you know, sometimes I'll say, oh, it appeared to be, oh, this is another project piece. I forgot. Okay, so I was actually discussing this with another reseller that I met there. Um, we met a couple of resellers that we have know from YouTube videos, so that was kind of exciting. Um, anyway, this is a beautiful Vera Wang dress. Not Simply Vera Wang. I don't pick up sim Simply Vera Wang. It's beautiful. Um, you could wear this, you know, to most events. And I think it would be the perfect dress to wear if you were eloping to Vegas. Um, but it has spots. Like, I don't know what, let me see. See the stains? But I was like, I'm just, I can't just leave this. I'm gonna take it home. I might just throw the whole thing in the washer. I know it says dry clean, but who, who listens to that? Um, and, you know, but maybe I'll first try to spot clean it. You can't really scrub with a toothbrush too much because of the texture. But I just, uh, I just couldn't leave it. And I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna try it. It's not my size, unfortunately, because if I could get the spots better, but it still isn't necessarily something I could sell, you know, I could keep it. Maybe someday I'll have a reason to wear it. Um, not eloping to Vegas. But uh, it's a size... I think 14. So I don't know. It might end up not being something I can save, but at least I will have, you know, tried. Um, I've sold one exactly like this in a different color. This is Redhead, which is sold at Bass Pro Shop. And it's just like a waffle knit Henley in a khaki green men's. I thought a woman could wear it, and it's a size XL. I can't say it like flew out of my closet, but it's sold. It's a good brand. I was willing to pick it up. Um, this, I'm assuming this is vintage. Oh, yeah, 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 because of the shoulder pads. So this is a US 14. The brand is JS Collection Woman, which I, I think I've seen JS S Collection, but and it doesn't really mean anything to me. But it's got those shoulder pads. Um, I just thought it was that pretty and you know classy style with those big big upturned cuffs and the sheen and that's the kind of thing you could wear to dress up a pair of black jeans to go out to eat or you could wear this with a full-length skirt to a you know an event a gala I think okay this I put into my cart because it had flamingos on them without really knowing what I was going to do with them and then I forgot that they were there. I, I can't sell these. They're boxer shorts. Not because they're boxer shorts but because you know unless I had several pair who's going to buy one pair of boxer shorts? Unless I put them on Mercari where I can put some or eBay and, and have the shipping be really cheap. 
Um, they're J. Crew Factory, but they have flamingos on them. I guess I could keep them and wear them, wear them as shorts. I might keep these. I just can't imagine, unless I find something else similar that I could lot it up, I can't imagine what I would, what's going to happen to these. Uh, oh, I did get a Quacker Factory, Quacker Factory thing. There was a couple of Quacker Factory things, but um, I didn't like the other one. This was a 3X. I only buy them if they're quirky enough. I was on the fence, but my friend was like, yeah, that's quirky enough. Well, I don't know. Uh, so it's like that. Um, that look of like a tank underneath, but it's, but, but it's one piece, you know, it's attached and it's, it's a pretty blue and it's got all the sequins and I think the sequins are all there. I'm, I'm, I get like hypnotized by the, the sequins against the phone screen. <laughs> All right, another vintage piece. I've got a couple of vintage pieces. Again, I'm wondering, not as much on this one as the next one, of, of whether it's a Y2K classification. So this is Carol Anderson, size 7, 8. That's paper. Um, made in the USA. Shoulder pads. And it's just a pretty floral dress. Kind of longish. And, you know, like quite a bit of fabric there. What's the period we're talking about here? Button front with buttons kind of close together. It's funny because the buttons are pretty close together, but there's only a buttonhole every other one. So these are just like sewn on. <laughs> Thought that was an interesting uh, technique that I've never seen before. Are there pockets? <gasps> yeah, and there's pockets. Cool. I get to put up a fun, and there's pockets meme as one of the pictures, because that's what I do. Okay, and here's the other piece I was talking about that I wondered if it was Y2K. The brand is Jordan, size 15, 16. Paper tag. Where is it made? Oh, Union Label. Okay. Oh, so Union Label, so it's not Y2K. Because uh, you that Union Label is 19, I want to say 70, mid-70s through mid-90s, which means this is 90s. Look at that. It reminds me of, I had, I, I had a vintage dress that was a brand called Zum Zum that was a similar era, I think. Look at that. Some pretty buttons. And then I guess like this... Goes on your shoulders. And then this goes slightly off your shoulders. Ooh, I thought I was gonna fall back. Um, in a, you know, a fullish skirt. I think this is pretty cool. Oh, I was happy to find this. I mean, it's just like a, a horribly synthetic fabric, but this is an amazing piece. And this, this, like has no signs of wear. It could have been made yesterday with a, you know, with an old pattern. Okay. I not only have made a point of not getting kids things, I saw an ad on Facebook for a, a children's, where you exchange, consignment shop in Vegas that I had never heard of before. Um, I don't know anything about them, but it started making me think, like, maybe I should take just take all my kids' stuff and bring it there and see if they'll take it and then just get out of the kids' biz. Um, and then I picked up another kid's thing. Okay, I got it because there were actually two that were super cute, but this one was handmade. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but there was no way I was going to leave it. Look how cute that is. And it's a hoodie. And in perfect condition. And definitely handmade. So even if, I mean, even if I didn't, ever sell kids things. I couldn't resist something like this. And I would just wait for the right opportunity for someone who has a little boy to give it to them. Or, I mean, it could be a girl. Whatever, a little human. And then I think I'm down to 
the last two pieces. Huh. I bought a pair of jeans. I've actually been selling a few pair of jeans, which normally I, I don't buy jeans much. I don't really shop the jeans aisle because I don't know what sells and most of them sit, but I have sold a bunch. I mean, I sold a Gloria Vanderbilt. A pair of William Rass that I've had in my closet for over a year. I've never even relisted it. So these are Joe's jeans. These need to be washed. Um, and their size, they just say waist 30, which made me think, well, if there's no length, maybe they're women's. But they have a super deep pocket, so they're men's. Um, and I just thought they were a good basic jean in good condition. Um, yeah, I'm going to wash these soon. And this is, let me just make sure. Yeah, I think this is the last piece. So how long has this been so far? Oh, I don't know, because I had to stop it. Okay, Max Jeans, which is not the reason why I bought it. I don't know anything about Max Jeans. I don't know if Max Jeans is part of something else. Um, Max Studio, I don't know, but this is a size extra large. It's navy blue with big polka dots, and so I already love that. But then look at the sleeve. Isn't that cute? So that's why I bought that. All right, that is everything. Um, <clears throat> Did you like anything? What do you think? What was your favorite? Um, again, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Thank you for staying this long. So I'm gonna hurry out, um, hit the like button, and uh, I will be back soon. And if you have any ideas, especially on that leather purse, of what I can do with it to fix that up, let me know. All right, I'll see you.